Hello, in this video, I'll talk about transcription in eukaryotes. In order to meet the metabolic demand of a cell, cells need to produce enzymes and several other protein molecules. And the instruction to create that protein molecules or, or to give rise to that proteins are inside the DNA. Now, these messages inside the DNA are decoded by specific decoders such that it produces the genetic blueprint, which is the mRNA. And that happens in a process known as transcription. In eukaryotes, we cannot simply imagine transcription like whatever is depicted here. Because, I mean, this kind of situation is pretty incorrect. Because in eukaryotes, there is the scenario is totally different and let's just talk about the transcription initiation in eukaryote then we can appreciate that why the situations in eukaryotic transcription is very different from a prokaryotic transcription in eukaryote the gene is not only dna just like in bacteria gene is organized in chromatin already you have histones associated with this dna and the dna is wrapped around this histone so there is a steric issue as well in order for the transcript in order for the transcription factors the rna polymerase to bind to the specific promoter region it is pretty difficult for that because let's say there is a gene which is at least 1 kb in length and let's say a nucleosome typically spans about a 200 base pairs. So at least a gene would comprise of five nucleotides. And in this whole span need to be covered by uh, RNA polymerase. So the movement of the polymerase, the binding of the RNA polymerase is not so easy in eukaryotes. Definitely in case of a core histone octamer, we can understand that how compactly it is, it, this packaging happens. So in this situation, the RNA polymerase can only bind if the DNA wrapped around the histone octamer is loosened up. Question comes that how the DNA wrapped around the uh, core histone octamers could be loosened up in, inside a chromatin. And this kind of loosening up or accessibility could be achieved by specific enzymes known as histone modifiers, which modifies the histone make them slide away or replace one histone with histone variants. There are other which are called as nucleosome remodeling complex. So nucleosome remodeling complex remodel the landscape of the chromatin, making sometimes uh, it more accessible for some transcription factor or RNA polymerase or sometimes making it more inaccessible. So nucleosome remodeling factors are very important thing for eukaryotic transcription itself. After that, we have to understand itself the enzyme which transcribes is way more complex in case of eukaryotes. Because in prokaryotes, we have only one type of RNA polymerase. Whereas in eukaryotes, we have at least three types of RNA polymerase. And the RNA polymerase 2 is the key enzyme which transcribed mRNAs. So in this video, we would be focusing on POL2 rather than the other ones. And we would be talking about the mechanism of POL2 based transcription of mRNAs. Now, this mRNA, this polymerase 2 and general transcription factor create a huge complex on the chromatin known as initiation complex. The initi and here is a comparison between the prokaryotic RNA polymerase versus a eukaryotic RNA polymerase. Definitely, eukaryotic organisms are complex than prokaryote. So, eukaryotic RNA polymerase is uh, comprising at least 12 to 15 subunits, whereas prokaryotic RNA polymerase only have 5 subunits. But, there is a dramatic similarity between prokaryotic and eukaryotic RNA polymerase. In prokaryote, we have earlier seen that the active zone was comprising of beta dash and beta subunit. And here in the eukaryotic RNA polymerase as well, the active zone is comprising of RBP1 and RBP2, which are structurally pretty similar to beta dash and beta subunit. Also, there is a there are two subunits, RBP11 and RBP3, which are quite similar to alpha 1 and alpha 2. 
Unlike prokaryotic polymerase, there is no sigma factor present in case of eukaryotic polymerase. Then how does the promoter recognition happen? Let's just look at it. So there is a huge complex and in this complex, the part of these complex are generalized transcription factors. Generally, the generalized transcription factors fall under TF2 family. One of the most important player of that is TF2D. TF2D has two parts. One is called Tata box binding protein and another is called TAF. Apart from TF2D, TF2A, TF2F, TF2B and TF2H are important other transcription factors, generalized transcription factors which help in several aspects of the initiation and the promoter escape. Now, TF2D has the main subunit which is known as Tata box binding protein or TBP which binds to a consensus Tata box sequence in the promoter. Unlike other DNA binding proteins, TBP has an unusual property. First of all, TBP is not a helix. It, instead, it's a beta pleated sheet. Now, TBP bind to the Tata box and bind in, in, the major, in the minor groove and that is unusual because other DNA binding protein binds to the DNA in the major groove and once TBP binds, it bends the DNA around 80 degrees and that makes the chromatin more accessible for uh, the transcription to start. Now, in the first step of elongation, the RNA polymers need to escape from the promoter and starts its journey along the gene. Now, definitely, this promoter escape, the license for promoter escape is given by one of the generalized transcription factor known as TF2H. TF2H has dual activity, helicase activity, which helps to open the DNA uh, in the near vicinity. And also, it has a kinase activity, which phosphorylates a C-terminal domain of RBP1 subunit. And the C-terminal domain has a heptad repeat containing several serine residues. And this TF2H phosphorylates at that serine residues. Once TF2H phosphorylates in the serine residues, the RNA polymerase, the eukaryotic RNA polymerase, polymerase is licensed to escape the promoter and move forward to transcribe the gene. Now while it is transcribing the gene, after moving 20 to 25 nucleotides, all other generalized transcription factors fall off from this complex. Only TF2F is attached with that while the, trans while the polymerase is traversing its way throughout the gene's length. Now the Elongation chemistry is pretty similar to that of prokaryote. So the RNA polymers move in a three prime to five prime, uh, five prime to three prime direction, and at the same time, the structure, the internal structure, is pretty similar. So there is a DNA entry site that is comprised by RBP1 and RBP2 subunit. There is a uh, NTP entry site, and also there is a site for exiting a tunnel, which is uh, a site for exiting the mRNA which is parallel to the C terminal domain and it has a deep meaning to it which I would be discussing. The basic chemistry is again metal ion catalyze, catalysis. It requires the RNA polymers requires magnesium based catalysis and nucleophilic attack from the uh, OH group of a uh, NTP to a, a strand of a growing strand. So as a result a polymerization reaction could happen, new phosphodiester bond could form. Now, apart from interactions in the promoter, the elongation rate could be regulated by other transcription factors acting in uh, acting in a binding in a distant location other than the promoter. So other than the promoter, there are sequences known as enhancer, may be located several base pairs, several thousand base pairs upstream or downstream. Here it is shown only upstream. Now these enhancers could bind to specialized transcription factors and by a DNA looping mechanism, it can interact with coactivator which can further bridge the interaction with the core promoter elements and thereby increasing the rate of transcription or increase the rate or fidelity by which the 
RNA polymerase would escape the promoter and run along the gene length to transcribe the gene. Apart from that, there are several uh, factors which help in this elongation. One of such factor is known as PTFB or transcription elongation factor B. PTFB phosphorylate several residues on the C-terminal domain and first of all it helps in promoter escape otherwise it helps in to enhance the rate of transcription and binding of several other modification enzymes. We have to understand basic post transcriptional modifications in these mRNAs are happening simultaneously while the RNA polymerase is moving along the gene length and transcribing the mRNA. Not only these kind of uh, specific uh, elongation factors or TF2H can modify CTD, this modified CTD is a platform for many interactions. Many proteins, many modification, mRNA modification enzymes such as splicing enzymes such as capping enzymes bind to this phosphorylated tail and now this phosphorylated tail is pretty parallel to the newly growing mRNA, newly growing mRNA which is exiting from the tunnel of the eukaryotic RNA polymerase. Now these capping enzyme can simultaneously create modifications even when there uh, there is transcription happening. So thus eukaryotic RNA polymerase has an incredible capability of doing multitasking, simultaneous post-processing with the transcription. Now after that comes termination. Now the termination in eukaryotes it's not well worked out. So there is clearly no termination sequence as in prokaryotes. Then how the termination happens? So it turns out that the RNA polymerase even after transcribing the gene to the full length still progresses several base pairs but you know there is a, a adenylation site known as AAUAA so this site is recognized by several cleavage factors known as CPSF and CSTF these cleavage factors bind to this specific site cleave the mRNA from there once it cleave people hypothesize and there are experimental evidences for that there are several RNAs like RAT1 eats the RNA out from that and releases the RNA polymerase. Definitely there are alternative hypotheses hypothesis exist in the field but this is one of the most established one of eukaryotic transcription termination. So this concludes my video on eukaryotic uh, transcription and this was an overview if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you